I'm joined by the Conservative MP, a supporter of Brexit, Bernard Jenkin. Is Mr Coveney right? Uh, no, he's completely wrong. Uh, of course, no deal is a misnomer. No deal might mean no agreement with the EU as we leave, but it means we uh, fall into the WTO framework of rules and we trade on that basis. It's a, tra it's a framework for trading with the EU and the rest of the world. What he hopes is there won't be a no deal because, of course, it would be far more damaging for the Republic of Ireland if the UK were to leave on the WTO terms uh, than it would be for the UK because, the, first of all, Ireland uh, sends 13 per cent of their exports uh, to the UK, but it's a very substantial part of their agricultural output. 40 per cent of their agricultural output goes to the UK. If they had to pay the, e the EU tariffs, which we would apply, uh, on, on food products, it would smash the Irish economy. Uh, 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 agriculture is about 20 per cent of their economy. To be fair to Mr Coveney, he said, yes, it would be very damaging for Ireland, but he also said it would have negative consequences for the UK. Do you accept that? Well, there are, uh, uh, there's a balance to be struck at the time we see the quality of the withdrawal agreement and the future framework agreement. Are we going to be so still tied into the EU and so imprisoned by their threats and blandishments that we are giving in and not gaining self-government, in which case uh, I'm afraid I think the British people will want us to, want us to stick up for self-determination, self-government um, and a free future in which we can prosper in the world like most other countries. And if we suffer some short-term disruption, which incidentally all the disruption will be as a result of EU dysfunctionality or even deliberate policy of the EU to try and force us to accept kind of some kind of punishment Brexit, it's all completely unnecessary. They don't need to do any of that. The obvious thing that Mr Coveney should be pressing for is for the EU to agree, to agree a, an advanced free trade agreement with the whole of the UK, between the whole of the UK and the EU, because then there would be zero tariffs between the UK and the Republic of Ireland. That would be in his best interests. But it would mean implementing an invisible customs frontier in Northern Ireland, which of course was the policy of the previous government before the Varadkar administration was elected. You say there would only be short-term disruption. How then do you respond to those companies we've been hearing from, like Airbus, Siemens and others, who say this is much more significant and no deal is absolutely not what they want? Well, um, I accept that it's not what they want, uh, but they didn't like the result of the referendum anyway. Most large companies uh, trade just-in-time supply chains across customs frontiers perfectly happily. Uh, they need to come to terms with that, that that's what's going to happen. Uh, this Chequers Agreement is most unlike... I mean, the, the EU is, is destroying the Chequers Agreement. Do you think but, the Chequers Agreement is dead already? Well, you've got uh, Mr Coveney this morning saying you can't split goods and services. So he wants services into the agreement. Well, the Prime Minister's already ruled that out. The Prime Minister said, this is it. You, you either accept this or we're going for no deal. So and I think Chequers is dead? Uh, I'm not going to... The Prime Minister is pursuing the Chequers proposals. Uh, I think she's going to find it very difficult to make them fly. And even if she got them... got some kind of Chequers proposals agreed by the government... by the, by the EU, she's still got to get it through the House of Commons. In, in the public's mind, it's the least popular thing to do. More people would rather remain in or leave without a deal in both cases, than would go for the Chequers proposal, this half-in, half-out proposal. So Coveney is really gambling, isn't he? Because if he thinks we're not going to go for no deal, and then he gets no deal, it's the Irish economy that's going to be hit, and I don't know why he is allowing the European Union to use the Republic in this way. OK, Bernard Jenkins, thanks very much.